game by game. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so we are just working this out here. But welcome everybody to episode sixteen of season two, and the much awaited and very long promised uh, simulation of the best eleven of all time uh, against each other. So let's break down. Uh, we'll break it down in a second of how this works. But essentially, we are about to go on to FIFA 20 because none of us have FIFA 21 because we have brains and we don't buy things that are just the same thing as the year before. Um, basically, what we have done is created on FIFA a replica of each team's best 11. Uh, and we are going to go ahead and put them. I'm going to mute my TV so that sound is in the background. Um, so we're going to put them against each other. Um, and see which team really is the best of the best. Um, Connor, how are you doing today? You doing all right? Yeah, doing pretty solid. Yeah, you know, except for waiting until middle of the night to record these episodes because Mr. Busy over there. Yeah, you got other stuff going yeah. on. Yeah, 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 Mr. I'm going home and I get to, you know, stay up late and not go to work, unlike some of us the perks of having off from work yeah i wonder what that's like um let's jump into scarf for the week real quick what do you got i'll go i'll let you first that's gonna be a quick one because i had i'm stuck with the scarf that i had from last time so uh, i got chicago again but let's just say it's uh it's for the red white and blue since this is there you go there since you go. we're You've recording this on july 5th yeah, you you've been you've been home for a little bit, haven't you? Yeah, well, I was home for a couple of days, and then I went on vacation, and then I'm I came That's back right. home. But I, back, I leave yeah. I leave again tomorrow, so I'll be back with the scarf. Hey. All right, yeah, I'm rocking I'm rocking the timber scarf. Uh, I was just looking through my my closet of which ones I wanted to pull, um, and this one jumped out at me, so I grabbed it. Um, but yeah, without further ado, because this one we're hoping won't take too long. Uh, I'm thinking we either do one one season here. Um, wow. Oh, share play lost connection. We've already lost it. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll just go ahead. I'll go ahead and just control it from here. We were trying to do a share play over PS4, but uh, none of us are paying for internet that strong. So <laughs> um, the the what we're, what I'm thinking is we either do we'll do one season definitely in a tournament style. So all 24 teams have been put. Uh, into a a league form tournament uh, each team will be played twice so you're going to play home and away um, and it'll just be a normal table uh, top of the uh, you know it'll be a, a total total table and then what I'm thinking is we take the top seven from each or we can do top six uh, because we're missing a few teams from each conference and put them into a a, a knockout tournament style and do something like that to see who will win MLS cup versus the supporter shield type of thing it's kind of what I'm feeling. The only I I like that idea. The only thing I would say is, I think on FIFA the tournaments are in like groups of eight, so maybe we have to take eight from each conference, so we can do sixteen. Just to just to bounce it out. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it, oh man, I opened. Did I open the wrong? Oh, I have. Also, I also don't know if it's gonna be. Maybe we just do the top. 16 because it's it's not going to split out by conference unless we're it skipping won't, but we, we can just pick out the top eight you know like just keep it realistic that way okay um so here here is how this was broken down over the last four episodes we've had i think right uh ex excluding last episode um we broke down and picked each team's best 11 of all time based off of trophies won uh you know ability on the team um, trying our best to exclude their, um, how do you say, like their, their entire career, just basically focusing on what they did with the, with the team. Uh, and we came up with a best 11 and then we put it into the Reddit groups. We, we let Reddit. You were frozen on me for a second. I thought you were gone. 
Um, so basically, I just found the players who played the most games and put them on the bench as well. Uh, so one, once we determined who the 18 of this best 11 of all time was, uh, we went back, and I've actually got the rules here. We went back and went into all the years that they played for that team. So 2011 to 2017, for example. Uh, and then we found their FIFA rating for each year that they were on the team. And we averaged it all together. Um, so, and this was in career mode. So if, if they went, you know, 71, 71, 72, you know how they did like those weekly updates. Um, we averaged all those together to get a yearly average and then average all the yearly ones together to get a career average for the team. Um, and then and as as we know fifa is 100 percent accuracy so oh, whatever correct, the correct. whatever the results are from this is that is it's, final and it's it is, straight facts yeah yeah no question at all um because fifa it was actually really funny because when i was looking through this um fifa index.com had a all the all the ratings all the way back to oh goodness i think it was fifa 05 and what you would see is it would be like fifa 05 they'd be like 81 rated by the time they got to FIFA 07, they were like 63. They just shafted them straight down. Um, but basically, so once we had this yearly average, we went on to FIFA 20 and found an MLS player that matched that rating. So if you, if you averaged out to a 70 rated left back, we found a 70 rated left back in MLS that we could transfer onto that team. Now, if we couldn't find an MLS player to do it, we went into the free agents uh, and tried to find a free agent that would that was already on the game that we could pit, put in there. Um, and if we couldn't find a free agent, we found a player that uh, kind of most people knew, um, with the exception of if there was a Stoke City player that matched that rating, that player got put in, just for the means. Jason needed it. We needed to get Jason in here. So, um, but yeah, so there are a bunch of a bunch of people in here that maybe don't match the. Uh, the, the MLS theme, but that's just because we ran out of players. Um, the other thing that kind of we to make it a little bit more realistic, if a player won MLS Cup, Supporter Shield, US Open Cup, Canadian Championship, uh, Defensive Player of the Year, MVP, Golden Boot, Goalkeeper of the Year, all those types of like individual or team awards, they would get a plus one on the total average for the year. Um, or if it was before 2005, it would just go on to their lowest rating. Um, that way, it kind of gave them a little bit of an advantage uh, for being a good winning team. Um, yeah, so we just tried to... Uh, um there what are you doing i can't you're you're muted i can't even hear you sorry my wi-fi at home is just awful. you're you're awful this is we can't have nice things because of you okay um so that, that's basically the way we did it so just for example we are uh well I'll, I'll break down how red bull worked right so red bull in the reddit group said we need to have a three five two um so we pit uh, Robles, Aaron Long, Mike Pecky, Kamar Lawrence, Dax, Tyler Adams, Sasha Question, Terry Henry, Lloyd Sam, uh, JPA, and BWP with Grella, Lynn Pear, Savarese, Vandenberg, Cahill, Walnick, and Guevara all on the bench. And what we did was we averaged them all out. And, and for example, um, Cahill averaged out when he was with Red Bull at a 76 rated center mid. Marwan Fellaini, who played is in China somewhere, uh, is a 76 rated center mid on FIFA. So he is now on the Red Bulls. Uh, likewise, Thierry Henry is an 81 rated left mid. Uh, Leon Bailey from Leverkusen matches that thing. Um, now, Dax McCarty, for example, was a 69 rated center defensive mid. Um, Marky Delgado from TFC matches that rating. So he is now on the Red Bulls as well. And it was just kind of a big mix of um, players that basically just fit all of the uh, all of the um, ratings there and, and 
every team is is all mixed up like that now. But what we're going to do now is we're in a, a, a group here and we're just going to sim game by game, uh, give you updates on kind of games that happen maybe like every four or five games. I think we're going to have 48 games here. So every like we can probably do every six games that we sim. Um, we can go in and, and give a quick update of the standings, top scorers, things like that. Um, and yeah, unless uh, what did I miss? What do I need to explain better? Because that wasn't very clear. Oh, I think I think he explained it fine, but I mean, obviously we know this isn't like a perfect simulation. Like it's FIFA, and like we're putting in players that are obviously aren't like exact matches of the player's ability. But this is just for fun, and I know you've run you've run it as like an experiment previously, and I believe you said the Galaxy came out on top. So correct. So I've run that this makes simulation. Sense. I've run this simulation about four or five times now. Galaxy mm -hmm. have ended up on top every time except once when Atlanta ended up on top, which was funny. Um, but I also did a knockout tournament where um, I basically let the game play. So I went on to, to kick off and just didn't pick a team. I just put the teams in there um, and Galaxy ended up winning that as well. Double elimination. They didn't lose a single game, which makes sense because it's quite clear that they were one of the best ever. Um, so it's more realistic than I mean, it, it, it's not super unrealistic. I'll say, but we shall, we shall see. So you want to dive right into it? I think you should, if you can, maybe you can, uh, you could share play with me again, but you can stay in control this time. At least that way I can follow along with you. Yeah. Let me, let me give that a shot before we, before we get going, share play, start share play. Yeah. And depending on how long this takes for us, I know we talked about possibly, uh, basically having the two computers play the well, we don't exactly have a final for this one, so I don't know how we can do that one. I'm also changing my position here because I need to charge the controller because I, I one day I turned off the auto turn off feature and my, I, my PS4 never turns off anymore, so I got to work on that. I'm in shot. All right, here we go. So I don't know if you mentioned it before, but I think we talked about how we were going to take the top eight from each conference and we were going to do an MLS Cup playoff. Yes. After this. Okay. And then yes, I think we, we talked about we that can, before. We can watch the final game of the MLS Cup playoffs. We can definitely we can, do that. I agree. We could talk through the game. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So we're going to jump right into it and sim the first match Red Bull versus Minnesota. Uh, best player on Minnesota right now. And, and what we'll do is we'll talk through who kind of scores for each team while we're here. Uh, so right now the simulation has happened. Red Bull and Minnesota tie 1-1. Thierry Henry scores for the Red Bulls uh, in the place of Leon Bailey. Uh, and for Minnesota, Vaco you can remember scores. who that is. Yeah, Vaco scores. Can you guess who Vaco is replacing? Is it Reynoso? Nope. Kevin Molino. Uh... And a bear misses a penalty. Uh, to to go to go high there. That's Christian Ramirez's spot, um, which is oh, interesting. Christian. All right, here we go. White Caps versus Red Bull. Simulation so week two now. White Caps beat Red Bull one nil. Albert Rusnak. Red Bull in the mud. Red Bull in the mud. What is going on? Albert Rusnak. Uh, so who's that? Filling in for Pedro Morales. And you lost connection again. That's okay. fine. You could just keep going. Yeah, you're not having a good day. You're you're in the mud over there. You might as well be back at school. Oh my god. So so Anthony Playa represents. Um, I think it's Landon Donovan on uh, on LA Galaxy. He's got six goals in two games already. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, all right, Red Bull versus LAFC. A tough start for Red Bull boys. Um, outside AFC is not going to be any easier. Nope. And it's zero, zero full-time draw. The one oh. thing I noticed when I was sending all these games, lots of zero, zero, one, ones. Must have been live stream in that game. Yeah, pretty much. Um, TFC versus Red Bull. This is game four of the season. Red Bull pick up their first win. Aguero with two R's. Filling in for, I believe that's Juan Pablo on hell. Uh, and Matt Beasler filling in for, uh, if I remember correctly, that's Aaron Long um, filling in there. 
which is pretty cool. Uh, Omar Gonzalez scores for TFC, but he's actually not Omar Gonzalez in this. He is Chris Mavinga. <laughs> because, That's not confusing. Because life makes sense. Red Bull pick up their first <laughs> win here. Um, this is up. Oh, Red Bull got to go to Galaxy now. Let's see how this one goes off. Uh, just, to, just to break down the Galaxy's attack, and we know how good they are. Their attack is Anthony Playa, Edison Cavani, James Madison, and El Shirawi. No big deal. You can take yeah. him. You got Matt uh, they, also have Danny, they also have Danny Ings on the bench uh, and Pedro on the bench. And Red Bull beat him 2 0. Pedro on the bench. Pedro on the bench for. Killing me. I'm gonna move since I since I'm back. Oh, welcome hey, back. Well. Thanks for joining us. I had to ask about uh getting getting situated for my rent payments for the apartment. Ay, ay, ay. You're you're on vacation. Stop worrying about big boy things, all right? All right. I'm in a new spot now too, so I shouldn't Oh, maybe maybe you won't disconnect on me. Yeah, I didn't this, need to. This care. video is going to be such a mess when people get this far. They're just going to look at it and be like, why are we cutting and talking about random stuff? But it's well, I'm going to cut out the parts where... Yeah, you're. I'm not cutting it out of the video. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Anyways, we are on match six of the uh, of the season here. SKC going into New York. SKC picking up a one nothing win. Over RBNY, can you guess who scored the goal? It's Caleb Stanko Caleb out of Stank. FCC. Uh, that's Davy Arnold right there. Davy, Davy Arnold. All right, so that that's a a an eighth of the way through the league. Yeah, an eighth of the way through the season. Currently on top, you've got Seattle Sounders with sixteen points through six games. Okay. Interesting. LA Galaxy in fourth, even though they've got top scorer Anthony Playa. Uh, Erling Holland representing uh, Didier Drogba, I believe. Or is that DeVaio? I think it's DeVaio. Um, six goals in six matches. Freddie Montero on FC Dallas, uh, four goals. Uh, Joe Gao, FC Cincinnati. Up the FCC, boys. <laughs> um, those are your top scorers there. Uh, and speaking of, Red Bull uh, host Montreal Impact this week. Let's see how this simulation goes. Yeah, they've got Erling Holland up top. And I guess he's going to score a goal. Uh, Piatti actually scores the goal for Montreal. Uh, and I do believe that he is – that is, oh, no, that is uh, his brother, Pablo Piatti, is filling in for Ignacio Piatti's spot. Oh, um, yeah, that, that makes cause sense. Because logic. Cause logic. Um, uh, Tierra Henry scores for New York Red Bull as well, uh, making it a one all draw. San Jose, Red Bull visits San Jose this week. Not an easy one. Not an easy one at all. And they do pick up the win. Vidra, um, the man from, if I do believe that's Derby on this Is game, that... no, Burnley. He, he transferred Der uh, Derby to Burnley. Uh, that's Sasha question. That's a Sasha question. Sasha. Not much of a goal scorer. More of a creator. All right. Houston traveling to Red Bull Arena this week. Hoping for some Brad Davis goals. What are we thinking? I got a 2-2 two -two, two -two result. I got two goals from Thierry Henry. I've got a goal out of Andrasik playing for Houston, which is the Brian Ching role. Uh -huh. uh, and knew who also picks up a goal for uh, Wade Barrett, or is that Chad Barrett? That was it's Wade. Wade Barrett. It's Wade Barrett, yeah. Um, so another another draw for uh, for Red Bull, who are sitting currently in eleventh place overall on the table. Uh, Seattle, Red Bull visiting Ooh. Seattle this week. Fun one. This could be good. Seattle pick up two one win. Uh, Ozimhen 
playing in the Obafemi Martins role, I believe. Uh, if I look back quickly. Yes, Azim Hem is playing in the Obafemi Martins role and Nico Ladero playing in the Nico Ladero role. Um, nice. Where Viafania playing in the Kamar Lawrence role also scores a goal. Um, yeah, so yeah, when, for, I was, when I was digging, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, for anybody confused, the team that we selected to control was Red Bull, hence why That's you're hearing point, yeah. Red Bull's games every week. Yeah. We, but uh, we, we'll we go through and give like an overall like uh, breakdown of the league every once in a while, just and certainly at the end. Yeah, no, we're we just we didn't want to take all the time to talk about each and every game, each and every it week. Take forever. Take There's forever. 48 games in the season for 2014 or well, 20, 24 teams. Yeah, yeah, 12, 12 teams a week, right? Uh, yeah, all right. FC Dallas coming to New York, the biggest player. <laughs> so you here. admit they're real, you admit they're a real team. No, no, they didn't win. Uh, Aguero in the um. Juan Pablo on hell roll and Kamada filling in the, uh, if I do remember correctly, he was in the Amando, uh, Amado Guevara role, which is a really nice uh, um, addition there for Red Bull. Um, added to us by the Reddit chat. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and Santiago Masquera for FC Dallas filling in, I believe that is his own role, I believe. Where are you? FC Dallas. There you are. Uh, nope, that is Fabian Castillo. Fabian Castillo's role uh, was Mosquera. So um, good win for Red Bull there. Good win for Red Bull there. We are all uh, Red Bull stands. Uh, and we will go one more game before the quarter, quarter of the season break. Um, Connor, what are your predictions here? Who do you think out of uh, could we and I'll, I'll start sending as we do this, but we talked about you know all these teams. Who do you think outside of like the, the big ones? Who do you think are gonna have a, a the best results? Uh so you said outside of the big ones, right? Yeah. Who do you think is like a sneaky good one? Well, depends on who you consider the good ones, but I assume when you say the good ones, you're thinking probably. Seattle, um, LA, probably Atlanta, the other LA. So if you take them out, I would think Toronto could be sneaky good. Because, okay, you know, like if you look at where we put them on the tier list, they're going to be lower because they had so much time where they were right. not good. But then they had the one season where they were just better than everybody ever so i think that they could be sneaky good and i will also say oh man maybe i maybe san jose Ooh, with, I like that. maybe with wando and donovan up top i like that i like that um while you were talking, Red Bull beat Real Salt Lake, um, Juan Pablo on hell with another brace, uh, and Chris Winger picking up a goal um, for RSL. That brings us to a quarter of the way through this season already. Um, Playa still tops with 14 goals in 12 matches. Holland falling close behind uh, 10 goals in 12 matches. Josef Martinez on New York City filling in the David Villa role. Uh, he is on eight goals in 12. Uh, Meza filling in the Philadelphia Union's role for. Uh, I believe that's Tranquilla Barnetta. Where are you? There you are. Yes, Tranquilla Barnetta um, is fourth. And then Ozim Hen filling in the um, Obafemi Martins role also on eight. So those are your top five goal scorers. Uh, Playa also has five assists in 12 matches. So he is just a machine. Uh, Cavani's got four. Vela's got uh, four as well. Uh, and Pablo Piatti has four. So all this, the, the normal players that we're thinking of. Currently, are we taking top eight? Is that what we're doing? Yes, top eight from each conference. Okay. So LA Galaxy have snuck back on top with 31 points through 12 games. Um, Philadelphia is up there, uh, 27 points. They're the top of the East. 
followed by Orlando City. Orlando City following uh, following suit there, which is kind of weird, right? They're 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 really looking. They're leaning on uh, Kaká and Nani and Gaese in goal. Everybody else is sub seventy, so very interesting to see that there. Uh, Red Bull sitting in tenth on nineteen points. The who do you think is at the bottom of the table? This is a good one. Through a quarter of the way through the season, give me bottom three. Uh, FCC, RSL, and Vancouver. You've got one right. Vancouver, okay. Minnesota United, and Colorado. Um, RSL is fourth to last, and FCC is sixth to last. So very close, very close. All right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sim to the middle part. So I'll go to 24 games here. We'll just talk through it real quick. And, okay. uh, and, and, and give a, a halfway through the season update. Uh, as FCC visit our good friends, the New York Red Bulls. Um, Red Bull beats them 2-1. Uh, Thierry Henry picking up another goal, as well as uh, Lloyd Sam. Ulysses Segura from DC United is Lloyd Sam in this simulation. Uh, and he has picked up that one. And then for FCC, Andrew Vooten from Philly is filling in the role of, where'd you go? FCC. Where did they go? There they are. Uh, Andrew Wooten is filling in the Brenner role. While we continue to sim, uh, Brenner, what's going on with Brenner in, uh, in real life, man? He's done nothing for us. Got the FCC curse. It's got to be, right? Yeah, uh, nobody nobody can do well there. It's just impossible. It's got to be. Portland Timbers uh, picking up a one nothing win. Uh, Mr. Mora in the Via Fania role, uh, getting a goal there. Um, so we talked about Chris Armas a little bit um, as DC United goes to New York here. Um, who is next up? Who's the next guy in the hot seat, do you think? Got to be thinking Hines, right? Atlanta have seriously underperformed the season. Yikes. I know it's early. Like, I don't, I don't think it was just the first name that came to mind, to be honest. I mean, yeah, it's probably because you watch him so much. Well, that, and I just feel like, you know, I feel like we expected a lot more from him this year. A lot of the teams you can see at the bottom, you're like, okay, we kind of saw that one coming, but Atlanta's just been a wreck. Bradley Red Phillips good. picks up a goal against DC United to give Red Bull a one nothing win. Uh, Raphael Wicke in Chicago, man, he's done nothing ever since he got there. Yeah, that's fair, but they are just coming off a a pretty good win, so I think that they what do you mean pretty good win. They beat Atlanta. That's not a good win. Yeah, well, they beat them pretty good. Yeah, that's not saying much. Uh, New York beats Philadelphia Union two nil. Um, Question and Thierry Henry picking up uh, goals in that one. Um, yeah. Actually, I have a different person, I think. Hold on. Just give me one second. Yeah. The other one I was thinking was uh, Vancouver's coach as Red, yep. Bull, Red Bull and Columbus tie 2-2. Uh, BWP and Thierry Henry get one uh, as Guillermo Barroschelotto for uh, Columbus being played by the Chicharito Hernandez. Uh, and Casper Shabilko, uh playing as Cunningham um, pick up goals. So they split split the points, two goals apiece. Um, yeah, Vancouver's, Vancouver's yeah. got to start in another direction. Mark Dos Santos, right? Yep. I was just looking that up right as you were saying that. But yeah, wholly agree. They should be doing better than they are. Yeah. Uh, Orlando beats Red Bull 2-1, two goals by Kaká, and one goal by Thierry Henry. So, um, goodness, that is, yeah, he's, he's just been completely underperforming um, in that spot, and he really does need to step it up. I'm surprised I haven't gone in another direction already. The other one I would say is uh, Matias Almeida at San Jose. Um, it's hard. It feels like they've been not been playing that bad this season. Like I know, but. <sighs> I know the results aren't. They haven't really been there yet. Uh, Red Bull beat Colorado 3-1. Russell Tybert um, for Colorado uh, in the Dylan Powers role. 
uh, and then Red Bull have goals by um, Dax McCarty, Sasha Question, and Lloyd Sam. Uh, so some of the old boys getting on the score sheet there. Uh, New York Derby, NYC versus Red Bull, who comes out on top. NYC, a goal by Anton Tinnerholm. Can you guess who Anton Tinnerholm is playing as? Uh, Macharita. No, himself. Huh. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, no, the, the, the big, I think the, the next guy up is either Dos Santos or Wiki. It's got to be. Because they've just been so, so poor for a long time now. They've had enough time to get through. Um, as we say that, Red Bull and Chicago draw goals by Aaron Long, BWP, uh, and then that would be Jesse Marsh picking up a goal, as well as um, Chatomek Blanco, both wingers picking up uh, goals on that one. Yeah. Did you get to watch a lot of games this week outside of the one that we watched? No, I mean, I was following the stats just for fantasy purposes, but don't Did think I watch? saw any of the games. Just yeah, the I one watched, that we watched. I watched a little bit of the the Colorado, or not the Colorado, the Columbus game, and then I watched the Red Bull game and then the one we watched. But um, it's so tough to watch MLS after uh, watching the Euros for all this time. The quality just goes whoosh. Um, Tierra Henry scores again to give New York a one nothing lead over New England. Uh, so that's really good. And we continue on with another game, Atlanta going to New York. 1-1 uh, goals by Terry Henry, and he's gone again. Where'd he go? Oh, he's still here. Connor, where are you? Get back here. Uh, Miguel Almaron also picking up a goal. So split points there. There he is. Just moving around again. Try to keep you on your toes. You're, you're wild. Um, this is the last game before the halfway break. It is another New York Derby, but this time Red Bull are home. And they pick up a 1-1 draw, which funny enough is NYC's fourth 1-1 draw in a row. In a row. Um, Tier on rescores as well as where'd he go? Uh, Eber. Eber scores a goal uh, being played by Diamande. Man, I wish, I, w I wish he worked out at LA uh, LAFC. Top five goal scorers. Playa still leading the league, 19 goals in 22 matches. Cavani, 16 goals in 24 matches. Those are both Galaxy strikers uh, already putting up uh, 35 goals. Awesome. Azim Hen um, playing as, of course, excuse me, um, playing as Obafemi Martin, 16 and 24. Uh, Zardes playing as Zardes, um, 14. Golden Boot Zardes. Golden Boot Zardes and Holland playing as uh, Devayo, uh, 14 and 24. So uh, Zlatan and uh, Robbie Keane are, are running the show right now. Assist Zardes with seven. Um, Morris, who is playing as Jesse Marsh with seven. Uh, Vela playing as Vela with six. Cavani with six. Playa with six. Uh, leading the league, top five. Red Bull are sitting in ninth. Atlanta in third. LA, Gal LA Galaxy in first. Impact Montreal in second. It's pretty cool. Um, Orlando still in fifth. Can you guess? Go, I'll give it. Go ahead and give you a guess at the bottom three now. This is interesting, actually. Um, I'm gonna say Colorado, RSL, and Chicago. Close. Colorado, FCC in the mud. LAFC, third Ooh. to last. Wild. I, 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 I don't think there are injuries in this, but that's kind of wild. Yeah, don't put this in the LAFC Reddit. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, 
just as a as a heads up, by the way, um, the game is being simmed on legendary, so there's no uh, you know sketchy business going on. But we will go another uh, twelve games and see where we're at. Um, yeah, what's going on with Atlanta, man? Talk to me about talk to me about Atlanta as Tierra Henry scores a hat trick uh, to beat Colorado three uh, one. Goal also by where'd he go? Uh, Dylan Powers again. Uh, talk to me about Atlanta, man. What's going on? Uh, I mean, I haven't caught a lot of the games, but I noticed on Twitter some people talking about how their defensive system isn't really going well. I think yeah. they were talking about how they're trying to do a man marking system, which obviously is very risky because if one man gets beat, then that's it. You know, he's, he's unmarked then. So that relies a lot on making sure that you guys are marking correctly. And I just don't, yeah, I don't think that's a system that you could just bring into a very, very new team with a new coach. Like, I think that's a system you need some chemistry with. You got to have some trust in your teammates and to be able to know how each other play. And this team is just so new with a new coach and everything's new. And it just has not worked out so far. You know, I, yeah, I look at this team too, and there's just, there's a lot of talent, but I do feel like there is a lot of areas that are weaker in the team. Yeah. And I just, it just hasn't clicked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Red Bull beat New England to two nil. Um, Juan Pablo and Helen Lloyd sound with the goals there. Uh, no, absolutely. I think the man marking system is super interesting for a team that was doing so well without it before uh, before that happened. Chicago beats New York 1-0, uh, goal by Jesse Marsh. Um, the very, just weird, very weird, um, because San Jose tried it and failed miserably, right? Um, so I'm not quite sure what somebody looks at and is like, yeah, this is the way to go. Um, just didn't make sense to me. Uh, Red Bull tie one, one, uh, Dom Dwyer and, uh, Lloyd Sam getting goals against Sporting Kansas city. Um, yeah, just, just kind of weird. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it strikes me as someone who came in and didn't really look too much into how the league has performed with certain systems. It, probably just strikes me as someone who came in with a system that worked somewhere else and was like, we yeah. can do this here. And that, that was Almeida in San Jose, right? He did the same thing. He was able to, to man mark in league MX and was like, Oh, I can just transfer it over here. Uh, Galaxy beat Red Bull two nil on two David Beckham goals. Um, do you think he changed, he goes away from it. You think he'll change his style. Or you think he's going to stick to it until they fire him. Uh, I think he's got to change it. I mean, if he, I, yeah, I, I just think, you know, there's obviously enough talent that you can get something to work with this team, but what's the system that's in place now is just not going to work. It doesn't matter if you give it time. It's just, I, I can't see it, you know, turning. I can't see it like getting over the hump and starting to work out. I just, think that if you continue to do this, you'll just continue to struggle. I, you know, there's not been signs where it's like, it's worked here, it hasn't worked here. It feels like it's just not working. No, for sure. Uh, Red Bull beat Portland 1-0 no on a BWP goal, by the way. Um, you don't have the players for it either, right? You don't have, like, if you want to have players like that, it's got to be super dynamic, uh, really athletic and, like, a lot of players that mimic uh, Tyler Adams, for example, players who can cover a lot of ground really quickly uh, and take really good angles. Uh, FCC 2-2 against New York Red Bull. Um, I'm probably just going to stop with the updates. I think we just go uh, sim through and because I, I like this little like sit down and just chat about things, right? Um, you need to have a lot more flexible, like, think uh, Bielsa's lead system where everybody's kind of just running around all over the place type of thing. That's what you need to be successful here. Yeah. Um, yeah just not I, a fan. I hear you. 
I, I think I think you're spot on with the athleticism thing. And I just think a lot of the guys in this team are not built for that. You know, like someone like yeah. Miles Robinson can maybe get away with it, but I don't right. know if someone like Barco or Moreno could do it. Right. Because you're you're asking a lot of them to make sure that if they're if the winger is gonna go, you gotta follow. Um yeah, or even if like the fullbacks overlap, then that's yeah, probably that's, the that's, wingers that's, that kind of the fullbacks go. Um, it's it's a it's a demanding system that players really need to buy into because it's not normal, right? It's not the normal. Okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna you know we're used to this, we're trained to this. You have to get people convinced that what you're doing is the right thing. Yeah, I think what I would like to see from them. Maybe it's just from a pure entertainment standpoint, but I would love to see them play fast and play down the wings because I I don't have a lot of confidence in the guys that they have in the middle of the field. So I would love to see them just utilize the guys they have out wide because I know they have like quick guys, you know, like Barco's quick, then Moreno's quick, Yosef's quick, you know, use those guys, use that speed and then just try to play balls over the top and just be quick, like sit a little deeper you know, absorb the pressure, pressure and counterattack. Almost like not to, you know, obviously tie, I don't want to tie it to other leagues too much, but like it reminds me a bit of how Conte played with Chelsea, uh -huh. where when they won the league that season, where it was like sit, absorb pressure, and then hit on the counter and just be ruthless on the counter. Yeah, and, and, and that's probably the way they should be doing it. But knowing how good they were before, you're, you're still missing a piece here or there um to make that work but yeah just an interesting system all around but before we go on we are three quarters of the way through this this 48 game season leading goal scorer nani 26 goals in 36 games out this, of nowhere this sim loves nani he's always top three goal scorer every time i do it uh cavani 24 and 36 um azim hen playing as over Femi Martins, 20, 23 and 36. Cavani, obviously, playing as Zlatan. Uh, Holland as Devayo, 23 and 36. And then Playa as uh, Keane, 21 and 31. Um, assists, Cavani as Zlatan, 12 and 36. Vela as Vela, 10 and 36. Bellotti for DC United, uh, playing as Wayne Rooney, I believe. Um, no, Raul Diaz Arce, um, nine and 35, Zardes playing as Zardes, nine and 36, Pavone playing as Blanco, nine and 36. Top of the league, our top five, Red Bull still sitting in ninth, still comfortable in the playoff spot. Montreal Impact, 84 through 36 games, LA Galaxy, 81 through 36 games. Seattle, 80 through uh, 36, Atlanta, 78, and Orlando City on 71. Hey, Montreal is on top right now. <laughs> yeah. Bottom three. Go ahead. Give me a guess. Um, I think we've had Colorado in there twice now, so I'm going to say them again. Probably say FCC again. And then I'll say – I don't think LAFC will still be down there, so I'll say – Ooh, drops down. I'll save maybe Vancouver slip down there. Colorado, Vancouver, and Chicago by a minus seven goal differential. Just uh, missed it. To LAFC. Oh, it is LAFC, still down there. LAFC is 21st on a minus one goal differential to RSL, who's in 20th. So quite interesting and obviously very accurate. Um, FCC obviously better than LAFC. Yes, yes. FCC to the moon. <laughs> Uh, but we'll go on and get to the end of this season here. Um, team that has surprised you the most? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say mm, probably the Galaxy, right? It's got to be. They've been so good this year, all surrounding Chicharito, who obviously we loved to rag on him last year, but he's been so good for them. And it's, it's it is good to see. So I think mine is uh, Toronto a and I, I knew surprising that surprising in a bad way, surprising it's in a, a good bad spin. way. Cause I, cause I knew that they were going to be 
they were going to have a tough time, but I didn't think Armas were going to make them that bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, six losses out of the last six games. Uh, you pissed off your only really good striker and made him practice with the U21s. Uh, the whole club has just gone into shambles, really. Um, on, a, on a flip side of that, Columbus, also not so great. You know, ninth in the ninth right now. After you know, basically they they really didn't change too much of their team. They brought they and they brought in a ton of people too, right? We thought they were going to be up here. They got two two starting elevens of starting players. Yeah, hey, that's almost, the issue. <laughs> that I would say that almost makes it too hard, doesn't it? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I got a I got one for you. Question for you. Go ahead. Who who do you think is a sleeper team right now? Who's a team that's maybe a little bit low? Er, but has the maybe some momentum or potential to move up higher. If Austin signs a striker in the summer window, Austin goes into the playoffs. They've got all the other pieces. They just can't score a goal. Well, they they put four past Portland. Yeah, but that's that's you know once in a blue moon. They they usually score zero goals most games. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm pulling for. I'm pulling for Austin to sign somebody and get into the playoffs. Yeah, that would be ideal. I got two teams on mine. Okay. First one I'm going to say is DC United. Interesting. Who who I think had a rough start to the season, but is really starting to pick it up. In their last five, they've won three games, and they drew one, and they lost one, even though that loss should have been a draw. But – Lost Nobody, draw. Who was that? Donovan Donovan Pines doesn't know how to play defense for a hot second. Oh, was that um yeah, NYCFC. Yeah, I remember that. Uh yeah, and then obviously they just destroyed Toronto and got Chris Armis unemployed. Yeah, that, that was disgusting. Yeah. And they're sitting uh, sixth right now. Man, I'm I'm here for I'm here for DCU. I think they've they've done they've gone through enough of the uh the difficulties, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So now they're here for it. I'm, I'm yeah. here to see them do well. Not not super well, but... Yeah. <laughs> and then my other sleeper team, the Loons. Don't give me the Loons. They were so bad to start the year. And I know we were like, oh, I told you so, I told you so. But look at them now. I mean, they're really starting to hit some form here. Yeah. They are... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the last seven games, they're unbeaten. I mean, this is the team that we kind of saw from the last year or two. It's starting to kind of piece itself together again. They they made those signings, right? The winger and the striker that that are coming together and starting to, to pick up their form. But um yeah, their their start was just really good after everybody told us we were so wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> before we go back on, we are now at the end of the season. Um, it was 46 games, not 48, because you obviously don't play yourself twice. Um, who do you think are the top goal scorers? I'll I'll let you I'll let you predict some things. Okay. I'll say Zlatan for top goal goal scorer. Okay. Um Am I guessing top assists also? Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you. I was going to give you top three, but... Uh, oh, okay. Zlatan, I could do top Zlatan three. Did, Zlatan did win Golden Boot. Yep. Let's go. Um, I'll say Nani second, and then Obafemi Martin's third. Nani was second. Devayo was third. Obafemi Martin's oh, third. So close. Uh, we'll, we'll skip out on assists. Nobody really cares about that. Clean sheets. Um. You don't really. You can just pick the team, uh, and I'll tell you who the goalkeeper was, because uh, we didn't really go through who they were. Um, I will say the most clean sheets is going to come from Stephen Fry. He was actually third with San Jose, uh, Sean Johnson second, and Adam Federici from Stoke, playing for LA Galaxy in third. Uh, Sean Johnson was on Columbus. Uh, Stephen Fry was San Jose. Uh, they don't track yellow or red cards, so we won't look at those. Um, so let's go ahead and break down the East and the West top uh, teams. 
actually, first, we should talk about who would have gotten relegated if this was a relegation league. Bottom three, go. Ooh. I think Colorado will still be down there. I think Chicago will still be down there. Ooh. And I think that RSL is the other team. Ooh. You got Colorado. Vancouver stays down. And FCC fall from grace. Oh, FCC. You fall into that bottom spot. You sputtered uh, on your trip to the moon. So out of 46 games, you are able to get a total of 138 points, right? Yep. LA Galaxy topped the table with 109 points. Atlanta United second That's right. um, with 106 points. The only time I'm going to see them second on the table this season. Yeah, I know. Montreal with 103. Seattle with 96. Orlando. 92, Columbus, 88, Philly, 83. That leaves three spots left in the East. San Jose with 80. That's that's a good spot for them. Uh, third in the West, eighth overall. That sounds about right. RBNY, sixth in the East with 71. DC United, 66. Who gets the last spot in the East? Take a guess. Um, Toronto. Nope. NYC get the last spot. Toronto miss out by by five points. Oof. The fourth place, the fourth place team in the West finished in thirteen, and that was Sporting KC. Then it was Portland. Then FC Dallas in sixth, but sixteenth overall with forty six points. Oh my God, this is awful. <laughs> RSL get the seventh spot with 45 points. And LAFC, who were in the relegation zone at one point on 43 points. LAFC made the playoffs. That's we should insane. we should we shouldn't have taken uh, all those players uh, or all those teams because that was tough. Um, I am gonna set up the knockout tournament now. Um Teams you think are having too hot of a start, but are probably going to fall off. Ooh. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Galaxy. Oh, you're a hater. I just think that with, you know, especially in the game that we watched last night, if Chicharito is out, this team just doesn't look like they could do it. And I know they were creating a lot of chances last night. But that's a game that they should have won 100%, and they managed to lose it. Yeah. I just think that they're too reliant on one person. I also think – I think New England's had a really great start, and I still think that they will be good this season, but I do think they'll cool down a little bit. Who'd you say? I'm sorry, I was setting things up. Who else? I said, I think New England's had a really good start this season, but I do think they'll cool down a little bit. Oh, you're you're a hater. That's right. <laughs> you're a hater because I predicted it and you did. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't let them finish on top because I will literally never hear the end of it. You definitely won't, and I, I'm glad you understand that. Um, Nashville, fourth place in the East right now. What are we thinking? Are they for real? I think they're they, legit. Yeah, I think they're legit. Real? Yeah. That's this bold. is a good team. I I agree. I think they're 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 really good. Um yeah, I'm just uh kind of shocked that they're that high. Like I, I expect them to be good, but I didn't expect them to be that good. Yeah. You know what? I want to add another sleeper team to my pick. I actually Ooh, think yeah. Red Bull could be a sleeper team. Interesting. I was I was waiting I was waiting for that to come up. I really I mean I like a lot of the people that are on their team. I just I think that they had a little bit of a slower start, but I do feel like they're starting to kind of piece it together. I mean, you had a really good win against Orlando last game. That was a very very good win. Yep. Yeah. You had a hard-fought loss to New England. Pro- 
probably a pretty a rough draw against Atlanta, but then you beat Nashville, you beat Orlando again. So, you know, you have some good wins under your belt this season. We are playing like the team that everybody expected us to play as, a team that we always are, a team that is not very good, but will always punch above its, above its weight class. Um, and it is just a matter of time before all the things start clicking. I think people are buying into Struber's system. I think they're starting to understand, okay, this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. This guy can be um, – this guy, is, this guy might be the real deal about what we're going through here. We kind of should just trust him and see see what he's got going on. Um, and listen, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, right? I, I think he's doing a really good job. I just need to see him maybe make one or two more, like, depth signings. I, I saw us rumored with a center back to fill in uh, with some of our issues. But outside of that, I think he's got all the players that he needs to be good that simple yeah i mean you guys brought in guys that are really performing well you know fabio's been playing well fabio's been playing out of his mind yeah and um who's the goalkeeper you guys sent again uh cornell yeah he's playing he's playing well and i mean you you the winning these games lately and you don't even have frankie amaya really and you don't have Kane Clark. So, I mean, yes, there's still guys that can help you make the team even better. Right. Um, so here's an issue that I just found. Uh-huh. Uh, you, can't, you can't set the seating. You yeah. can't say who plays who. So. Interesting. I'm going to go into. Hmm. How are we going to do this one? Is there any way to set it up so that it's like almost World Cup style where you have like groups and then they, they, you know who comes out of groups? Yeah. Um, didn't think this. We are back. Okay. Um, yes. The other team, the other team that I think might be. Um, are we, are we still on dark horses or are we going to. Uh, you can talk about whatever you want. We can, because this is kind of what it is, just kind of like a free-flowing thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no structure. There's no rules. Structure. Just like not. this league. That's right. Um, so we talked about kind of like most surprising team, right? Yeah. Most surprising player, player, and outside of Chicharito, we talk about him all the time. Anybody who like jumped out at you is like, man, he's playing really, really well. Uh, we are simulating, by the way, Atlanta versus NYC, one leg. Uh, that is one versus eight in the East. I would say, you know what? I'm going to say Carlos Heel. Nice. And not because he wasn't talented before, because obviously he was, but he like took that next step from being talented to now he's MVP front runner on one of the top teams in the league. So I think he's just been so good this year. And I would 100% give him the MVP, give him the MVP right now. I think so too. Um, I like that one. Uh, by the way, NYC knocking off Atlanta in penalties. Uh, oh, come on, Brad. <laughs> uh, that's Pedro Gaese. 3-3 three, three in, in uh, normal time with teams exchanging goals in overtime. So it goes 2-2 at the end of the game. You've got uh, two goals by Barco and a goal by uh, Barrios, which represents, hold please, uh, Vialba, which represents Vialba. And then David Villa scores for NYC. Joseph doing it to his own team. Joseph doing it to his own team with um, Matriza, who is playing as Matriza, <laughs> and uh, Fabian Erbers, or Ebers, or playing as. Tommy McNamara, you love to see it. Um, Tommy McNamara makes this Tommy team. Mac Stop levels it. the game, yes. And then uh, penalties, 3-4 to move on. Um, no, I think that's really good. The other one, 
Um, Sean Davis, and, and this is just one because I've been watching him all season long, but the jump that he has made from where he was to where he is has been phenomenal. Um, he has come and, and distinguished himself as one of the quieter, but maybe one of the, in the argument of one of the best center mids in the league right now, which is unreal. Uh, um, but he has been so, so good. He's been one of the reasons that Red Bull are as good as they are. Um, so big props to him. And again, I'm only going to pick Red Bull players right now because it's kind of all I've been watching. Uh, but Christian Caceres Jr. has been a, an absolute stud over the last couple of um, over the last couple of weeks. Like you felt his absence when he went off to Copa America. Yeah, no, agreed. I I almost want to say uh, Jean Luc Abusio also. Yeah, I like he's, that. He's been good this year. He's yeah. he's, he's proven that he's another one of these quality youngsters that's going to come out and get a move to Europe. Yeah. Um, and we, I know we talked about it on the, uh, the stream last night, go check it out if you haven't already or on Sunday night, but um, anybody you think probably is going to get a move real soon. Like we talked about Tessman and um, we talked about Busio and we talked about all these FC Dallas players, but anybody, you think probably should get one? Uh, yeah, Diego Rossi. Yeah, I'm about that. I think, especially if, well, I think, you know, LAFC will probably still be good this year, even though they've been a little rockier than they have been in the past. Um, yeah, I think he's just primed for that move. I, there's just not much more you can get out of him. I think he's, getting close to his peak value here in MLS. And I think they got to capitalize on that. I hear you. I hear you. If we're, if we're going to talk about LAFC players, can we talk about the complete underachieving of uh, Mr. Carlos Vela? I haven't heard his name once all season long. Yeah. It seems like he's been like on and off the field. Doesn't seem like he's been consistently playing, but yeah. It's got to be some, maybe some more consistent playing time could get him going again. Yeah. Um, uh, Before we continue on, Montreal Impact knockoff, DC United 1 0. um, Ignacio Piatti scoring uh, the game winner in the 84th minute, which means it is NYC Montreal in the semifinals. Um, Yeah, you know, uh, he's on again, off again, but man, he has just been. Again, I haven't heard his name all season long, and for, that's for somebody who, and and I know your bold prediction was like he's finally going to get overtaken, but um, yeah, this might be the year that people just kind of forget he exists. Yeah, we'll have to see if he can bounce back from this, but um, you know, for LAFC's sake, you really hope he does because he's such a crucial player for them. Um, another guy that. <laughs> Definitely is getting a move very, very soon. Daryl DK. You think? I do, believe it or not. I'm shocked he didn't they didn't buy him straight up. Well, they probably don't have the money. They didn't get promoted. I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, you know, there was rumors about his price tag being like all over the place. It was like, you know, I heard low, like a couple million, and then I've heard, you know, above 10 million. I've heard like 20 million. But I got to imagine if it's even like in the 10 millions, they probably, even if they do have the money to buy him, that's probably like all their money. Right, right. So I can't imagine they would. He's He should get a move to like a Premier League team, probably wonder, somewhere mid-table. Yeah, I mean, I would prefer to see him lower just because I think he'd benefit from it better. Um. Oh, please. That'd yeah, I mean, he proved that he's better than championship standard, even just yeah. in that short time that he was there. So I think that – I do think that he can handle it mid-table. You know, I think he could do it at, like, a Crystal Palace. Like, seeing him link up with Wilfred Zaha would be pretty cool. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool. I agree. Um, yeah, 
I I would say he's probably in there. Um, really kind of shocked Chris Mueller still doesn't have a, a move going right now. I mean, he definitely deserves one as well. Yeah. Red Bull have Red Bulled very hard here and gone out in the first round. Orlando beating them two to one. Um, goals by Kaka, Nani, and BWP. So flip side of it, who's been a player that's been disappointing for you this year? I mean, there could be a whole list of players, I feel like, but yeah, anyone um, that sticks out to you. So we talked about Vela a little bit, but who sticks out? Reynoso, probably. Um, the drop-off, I get he doesn't have a lot of players around him, but that drop-off is still massive um, for somebody who was bought for that much money to create. Um No, I'm you're pull, right. I'm just pulling some stats here. Uh, Ten yeah. games, one goal, zero assists in MLS this season. I don't care who you have around you. You should still be able to create enough chances where you have an assist. No, I agree with you. He's been really quiet this year. Yeah. It's been surprising, to say the least. Yeah, and he's only he's only been not picked once. Every other time he's been playing. Yeah, I think, to be honest with you, there's like a whole laundry list of people you could put on this list. I mean, you could. Oh, yeah. Um, one for me, kind of mentioned it before, but uh, Diego Rossi. Has, he went from the golden boot to being having three goals this year so far. That's I mean, three, three, to be honest with you, is more than I thought he had. But he has played almost every minute, it seems like. Yeah. Can I mean, we he's... put the entirety of FC Dallas on there? No, because I'm not going to put Ricardo Pepe on there. All right, fine. Everybody except Ricardo Pepe. Because they've been uh, awful. Yeah, they've been pretty bad. Um, the, big thing, the big thing for me, and, and somebody pointed out, is Frank O'Hara has been awful. And that is your big DP striker signing that you need to you need to score goals for you, and you've got Pepe doing it. Which again, play your kids, right? Stop buying all these players that aren't going to do anything for you. Play your kids. Um, Columbus knock off Philly. Zardes with two, and then Nia's Gota for Philly, which I believe is Jabilko. Um, oh, uh, another one for me. Uh, Barrich. He's been really yeah. quiet this year. Yeah, for somebody who we thought was going to blow up, right? Uh, yeah. I think some of that has to do with just the team in general not performing so well, but he's got one goal this year. Yeah, and I think I think they're on the on the uptick, I think. I think they'll be back and being okay. But yeah, he's been all all of Chicago has been poor. Um So we talked about Brenner too, right? Brenner being underachieving. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely Brenner. He's been, he he was supposed to turn this thing around, especially with Lucia Costa behind him. He was supposed to blow that team up, and there, we and we didn't talk about this either. But is Yap Stalman on his way out? I mean, you gotta think so, right? You gotta think it's it's within the realm of possibility, right? Yeah. How much more time do you possibly give him? I mean, they're sitting eleventh right now. They're not doing horrible. They will. I think they're moving in the right direction, right? They beat. Uh... Well, here's the thing: they got they got a couple of wins and a draw in their last three games, but they beat Chicago, they beat Toronto, and they drew Houston. So, like, it's not exactly something you know to write sure, home about. But, but you need you need. They didn't get those results last year, right? So it's still no, a step you're, you're in the right, right direction. You're right, but 
you yeah. still gotta you gotta continue to go forward you can't just beat you know the bottom of the barrel in your league and then you've now moved from last place to fourth to last where you're still out of the playoffs and you still aren't making much progress right i hear you there um El Trafico to kick off the Western Conference uh, simulation here. LA Galaxy smashed them three to one. <laughs> Wasn't even close. Um, that sounds like real life. Yeah. You had uh, Danny Ings scoring twice, which I, is that Robbie Keane? No, Keane's um, player, isn't he? Hold on. I think I might have missed next. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Playa is Carlos Ruiz. My bad. Ah, okay. uh, and Keen is Danny Ings. Got it. So Ings okay. he gets two, and Junior Urso gets one, who is Juninho. Uh, and then you've got Moreno, who is Atuesta. So, not even close, which is exactly how it should be. Yeah. Um, yeah, the tough part about doing it this way is it takes about three minutes for them to advance to the next match when the thing's over and, like, close it all out. I don't know. It's weird. Um, nope, I hear you. Yeah. We'll just keep chatting our way through it. Keep chugging along at 11.45 at night. This is what it's... we do for the content, people. This is what we do for the content. You're gonna have to function at night. You're gonna have to Um, end well. That's fine. It's entertaining. So, Inter Miami. (laughs) That's that's actually where I was gonna go next with this. Yeah. Thoughts? They are a dumpster fire. If if Adam ever if Adam ever says anything about dumpster fires again, again, I think I think he's not here because he knows that he would just get bagged on the entire time. And rightfully so, man. This team is a mess. You you break roster rules. You hire all these you know big managers to do nothing, all to finish like bottom three teams every year that you've been in, in, in existence. Yeah, not, I, not a good look. They're they're in like a spiral right now, just absolute free fall. I mean, they've yeah. lost their last five games, and. And nobody's I mean, talking lost. about it either, you know? Nobody's blowing them up. If Seattle lost five in a row, the the entire the entirety of MLSsoccer.com blowing up. Inner Miami is their little, you know, pretty boy. They can't talk anything about it. And they just stay quiet. Yeah. But at the same time, I think people could have expected this. So maybe it's not as surprising as like Seattle losing five in a row. Sure, sure. sure. Um, um and I think they're probably trying to distract as much attention away from Miami as they can because yeah. everything's been a disaster over there. Yeah. Um, Lucas Mordiel, acting as Clint Dempsey, scores a brace for Seattle against Real Salt Lake to put them through 2-1. Um, RSL goal scored by um, Jefferson Saverino, uh, being portrayed by Luis Diaz. And now we wait two minutes to go back to the other one. <laughs> um, no, no, I hear you. Um, it's it's tough, right? It's a tough, it's a tough thought, right? Because, and on one hand, you don't want to bring attention to a team that broke your own rules and you just completely missed it or ignored it or whatever. But on the other hand, like. I feel like it would be really cool to call them out and call them really crappy, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, they, they deserve it. I mean, it's so disappointing too, from a league perspective, because this was such a golden opportunity. I mean, this is the team where you felt like it could drag someone like Griezmann mm-hmm. earlier from when they were originally planning to come to major league soccer. Right. That's, that's a guy that, you look at you know like almost 100 percent. this dude's coming to play here at some point yeah. and it, it this was a team where you feel like maybe they can grab him and get him here in the latter stages of the prime of his career which would be so sick it'd be unreal 
It'd be he great would, grab. He would, he would be the best player in the league by like a zero long shot. Contest. Zero yeah. contest. But if I'm Griezmann now and I see this, do I really am I really rushing to go there? No, I hear you. I hear you. Um San Jose beats Dallas 3-2. You've got a brace by where'd he go? Just had him. There he is. Wando. A brace by Donovan. Oh. And another goal by Shea Salinas. You love to see that. Yes, uh, and definitely. Then FC, FC Dallas goals scored by Brian Hollick said. Uh, Jason Kreis. Oh. Try. And uh, Maxi Oruti. Uh, what's the difference? Ryan Hong's had plays in the same places. Pretty Jason much. Christ. Pretty much. Um, but this is what I was telling you about before, right? When you do these simulations just on this, the, the we're going into the last of eight games. Six of the seven games we've simmed, the home team has won. It's kind of sucks. Um, man, I, again... I'm all for like trying to cover up, save face, whatever. But man, that is just such, I can't, be, I, I still can't believe it happened. But how do you mess that up so badly? Like you hire, you have to hire the right people to get that job done and you didn't do it. And now you've got a lot of people looking at them like, oh man, you're right. Like, do I want to even come here? Yeah. I mean, this doesn't feel like something that was a mistake. I mean, no. Every team has been doing this. And following these rules every year, and this this hasn't been an issue. Like even LA Galaxy with their four DPs at one point was able to resolve it and get it fixed. Yeah. But there's no way that you just like came in and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I don't know how the rules work. But you all don't, you don't actually twenty three other sign. teams can figure you, it out. You don't accidentally sign uh, five DPs. You just don't. Mm-hmm. Oh man, so bad, so bad. Yeah. And and again, yeah, you don't hear enough about. Them. Like I feel like when when they every time they win, they'll like blow them up. But because I mean, one nobody's saying like, oh, is Neville out? Like, and and that goes back to the conversation of. Um. Oh man, I put the wrong team. What? That didn't work, right? I'll have to redo that one. Um. Media in MLS is so lenient with the way that they do things like if you if you lose five games in a row like the press is all over you in england or spain or italy or whatever here it's like so how was your day today right like nobody nobody is throwing you under the bus because you've lost five games in a row yeah well the thing here is like in england you lose five games in a row that's it that's probably your season done right there like Right, they're, if you're, you're not challenging like for the if title. you're if you're a top six team, that's it. You're done. You're not yeah. you're not winning the title anymore. If you're um like a typical mid table team, that's it. You're you're ch- you're maybe outside chance of getting into your done. And in the MLS, with the way that they're structured with MLS Cup and playoffs, you can lose five games in a row and still easily make the playoffs and then win right. the cup. And that, that's a, a conversation for structure, right? Do we need to restructure the league in any way, shape, or form? Yes. Yeah, me too. I agree. You can't be having teams lose five games in a row, six, seven games in a row, and then still being able to win the cup. That's just not right. The way that Seattle won there, uh, <laughs> the way that Seattle won their uh, – their MLS Cup in 2016 is the exact reason why you can't have playoffs. You know what I mean? What it it messed up again. Yeah, I mean, it. I mean that goes back to the pro rail conversation, which I know we had a while back. But you know, the people should people should go back and listen to that episode, not just because we're trying to promote our own stuff, but. I know it's very easy for people to go online and be like, oh, they should just do pro route like everybody else in the world. But it's just, it's more complicated than that. You know, there's the way the league is structured and built right now. It may not be plausible to do that without 
tanking a bunch of teams. Right. Okay. Let's let's dive into this since we've got some time here. Okay. You you financially cannot do pro well, pro rel right because and this is what this is the thing that I will I will just you know blurt out to anybody who who wants to just scream pro rel right. How many USL teams do you know? Right there off the bat, the first thing they're going to say is, um, and then they'll say some like second team of a pro team, right? Um, SKC beats Portland uh, four three on penalties to move on. By the way, um, <laughs> that right there is the exact reason we can't have pro rel because the second they go into the second division, it's game over. You there is no chance that they're going to come back and survive that. And right there, all your favorite teams that you you know you claim to love so much and and will follow to the day you die, will fold. And you won't have a second league we, because people don't care enough about the league here to do it. Would it be a lot more fun for the casual fan? Maybe, right? Maybe that 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 um, struggle to to stay up would be really good. But once they go down, are you going to stick with them and and continue to support them? Maybe yeah. not. I don't think they would. Right, it, because you've got too many other different things going on, right? In England, you don't really have major markets in NBA, NFL, MLB. You don't have all these other sports that you can be watching. Here you do. So if your team goes down and you, again, and, and, I'll, and I'll, you know, not to pick on Jason here, right? But, you know, if FCC were winning all these games, he'd probably make a, a better effort to watch them, right? But because they just continue to lose all the time, what's the point? And I, I don't blame him. I wouldn't I wouldn't get up to watch bloody FCC every weekend, especially if I'm busy doing things, right? Um, yeah. That being said, you know, if they were to go back down and he, you know, again, he works crazy hours, he's working all this time. Do you really think he's going to put in all this effort to, to make time for them? Probably not. I mean, he does it with Stoke, and I think that's really cool. But is he going to put that extra effort into a team like FCC? Yeah, I mean, and, that look goes, at it. and that goes for every team, right? Yeah, I mean, if Chicago were to go down this season, let's just say, like, Pro Rail was in the season, Chicago goes down. That team is not going to – there's there's no recovery for them. Right. Like, fit, they already struggle with getting fans. Now you're in the second tier. That means even less people are going to come. And that means your financials are going to get even worse. Exactly. And, and it's just a spiral. And eventually they'll – and because the owners are too stuck in their way about what they're doing in terms of, you know, financial – the financial side of things, they're not going to – they're not going to put in for it. Um, well, the problem is that a lot of these owners don't solely own – you know, soccer teams. Correct. Yep. They own football teams, basketball teams, hockey teams. I mean, they own yep. other things. So if, if if they're owning a soccer team, like let's just say, you know, we obviously all know about New England and their owners. Yep. If New England were to drop into the second division, why would they care at all when they could spend their time on the Patriots? Exactly. And that's the exact issue with what we have going on here. Um, and you have that issue in England too, right? Uh, by the way, NYC knock off Montreal in extra time. Um, Yangel Herrera and Eber scoring as well as Drogba. So NYC are benefiting from the home team um, mindset here and, and moving their way through this, this bracket. Um, but that you again, you have those those issues as well, um, right? You look at Bolton, you look at um, uh, Bury, you look at the teams that almost you know get rel you know get folded every year. It's the same thing. They've got bad administration, but it's a much less common thing there than it might be here if we go pro rel. Yeah, I mean you're gonna you're gonna also get it's very tough. American sports to do something like they have in England where you're just it's like 
pro rel no salary cap kind of a thing because that gives you the divide that you have in baseball where you see the Yankees being good every single year, year in, year out. Except for this year. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's like your equivalent to the big six. You know, you see the Red Sox, they spend the money. The Yankees spend the money. You know, yep. the L.A. teams spend the money. Those are like your big six equivalent. And then you look at a sport like basketball where there's a salary cap. So what happens? You have to develop players through essentially like your youth academy. And then it'll rotate, you know, as those guys move on, move on to new teams, you know, they retire, it resets. And then you see new teams winning, which is what you have in the league right now, which is why you have people winning the cup. And it's like a new team winning the cup all the time, as opposed to watching Man City win the Prem every single year. Right, right. And that's and that's kind of what you're, you're going to get. Um, Zardes scores a brace uh, and Pereira scores one. Columbus moves on 2-1 over Orlando. Um, no surprise. Jassy's already scoring goals. Um, no, and again, that's the thing. It's very easy for somebody um, who doesn't watch the league and doesn't understand the financial aspect of it, just scream, oh, pro rel is, is, is the way we got to go. Otherwise, I'll never watch it because it's not fun. But it, it has its own version of the push, right? Um, that little push to survive. You look at that and it's not obviously to the, the, a larger scale, right? But the, the push for playoffs for those like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 teams are the same, is the same push. And that like giving up in the middle of the season for the last place teams, you see the same thing happen with like the middle of the pack teams that aren't fighting for relegation or fighting for top seven, the, you know, the 14, the, the 10 to 14 range and no, they're never going to move. They're not, they're not pushing hard. They're just showing up and trying to play, you know? So, so it's, it's a parody that comes from the European mindset of they play in Europe, they're better. Granted, they're, they are more technical. I'm not going to go out and just try and pretend that they're not, but to pretend that the league is just boring is just wrong. It's just wrong. So, so I got a question for you. How, sure. you know, in, in, I don't think that this is necessarily like, the equivalent to like other sports in america so like the nba obviously one way that they try to deter bad teams from just tanking their games is to put the lottery on the draft right that way you're not guaranteed if you just go out and just you know throw every game that you're going to just end up with the best draft pick and i don't think that I don't think that's something you should do for MLS because I don't think the draft holds the same weight as it does. It does. It does. And that's why you see Philly never taking players. Right. Because you just develop guys through your academy. Right. So my question for you is those teams that are in that like 12 to 14 range in their league, how do you, how do you keep them motivated? How do you keep them, you know, like an FCC from last season? How do you get them to continue to push even later on in the season where you know, the, the playoffs are out. How do you get them to not just say, well, that's, well whatever. That's what they kind of, I think, are trying to do with the the little, like, the, the competition that they're having between, like, the fourth to eighth place finishers in each conference. They're, do, they're like, playing against some Mexican, like, fourth to eighth, eighth place finishers, uh, which is more money coming in. They're trying to incentivize them that way. Um but you really – its a, that's a tough question. I'm sure that's something they're trying to answer. Um, to the end of the day, you can't, right? And, and you're really just kind of hoping that they're – the way that they interact with their fans um, and, and the money that they bring in from them is pushing them to, to be where they want to be. Um, it's a really good question. Uh, LA Galaxy won 3 nothing, by the way, so – I think we can tell where this one's going, yeah. but um, it's tough, right? Because how are you gonna how are you gonna look at somebody and be like, you need to care when all they all they really need to worry about is next season? Um, yeah, and there's nothing, you know, like in the prem. Obviously, there's the threat of relegation that's gonna push you to not just be like, oh, we're halfway through the season, 
we're sitting bottom of the table. We're obviously not going to make the playoffs. Let's just throw the rest of the season, basically. Like, let's just, you know, make sure our guys don't get hurt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sporting KC threw 4-3 on penalties, 0-0 after full time. Um. Yeah, it, it's a it's a it's an age old question, right? How do you how do you motivate anybody? I think maybe you can try to use the salary cap to your advantage. Maybe depending on where you finish in the league determines how much you Which know, like you Tam get, or Gam, you get. Right. You everybody gets a base number, but if you finish higher, you get more. But does that create more enough disparity in the league where? Teams like FCC, Chicago, you know, DC for the last couple of years, they're all going to have less money. So they're going to, they're going to be at a, le- a, a financial disadvantage, right? Well, here's the thing I would say, you know, Tam Gam is more important if you want to make some of those craftier moves, like if you want to grab a guy within the league or buy down a contract. But I think it comes down to the owners and who you spend on DP contracts that are really going to make the difference. You know, you bring in three guys that are DPs and that really perform well for you. That's going to drive your team to success. Right. But here, let me, let me play devil's advocate, right? Um, You, you start doing that thing where you say, if you finish higher, you get more gam tam, right? And because of that, you can buy down contracts more frequently. So you buy down contracts more frequently, and now you're looking at teams like LA Galaxy, who, you know, consistently finish high up in the table. Um, now they, instead of having to sell Romain Alessandrini, they buy him down. So now they've technically got four DPs on roster while FCC are struggling to get two. So that's the flip side of it to me. Yeah, but if, you know, if FCC start to bring in the right players and they work themselves up the table get more money and put yourself in a position to compete with someone like la galaxy you know you don't have to jump from last to first all in one year you can work your way up you just gotta you gotta do it in a smarter way than other teams you just gotta be better than the next guy in front of you just work your way up the table now we go no. back to motivation, right? And again, I'll, I'm just playing devil's advocate for fun now, but you go back to motivation. How do you motivate somebody by saying, okay, you need to work harder, but then you look across the table and you've got teams that are buying like superstars and your team is just a bunch of USL guys and you don't have them, you don't have the money to compete with them. Then you're looking at things like baseball where you can tell, you can tell somebody in, in Milwaukee, like, Hey man, you gotta, you gotta be, you know, better than this guy you know read read his pitches better and and you know run harder and read you know at the end of the day if the Yankees are going out and buying every every star in the in the league you're not competing with them yeah I, uh, yeah I think you are right on that but at the same time you know from comparing it to a baseball perspective there is a bit more rules and caps that would stop you from just buying people the way that they do they can in baseball right. so you wouldn't you do you wouldn't be able to stack up as much as you can you know obviously like you said guys can you know they'll be able to buy down more guys and make their teams be stronger um which could be good for the league mm-hmm. yeah i mean well if you want the league to do better you gotta right you gotta, you gotta the invest. salary you gotta invest in it right um Columbus beat NYC 3-1, by the way. Uh, so now we're moving into the final game of the Western Conference, LA Galaxy versus Sporting. Ooh, so Columbus is in the MLS Cup Finals. They are with LA Galaxy. Shocker. Surprise. LA Galaxy win um, this one 2-1. So good good fight for SKC. But we will – you want to do a – want to watch the whole thing? Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Even though I can't see it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll comment. Yeah. You know what? It is getting a little late. We've gone a little long. Maybe we just, yeah, we could just submit. Yeah. We know who's going to win anyway. We know who's going to win this game. Um, <laughs> and if it doesn't, wow. But, uh, FIFA. Yeah. yeah we're wrapping this up here. Um, 
it's kind of transitioned from a, a, a best 11 of all time tournament to a mid a quarter season recap. Um, so I hope we pick this up. I think maybe, maybe if I edit this and I have some time in the video, I'll put like a, a, a thing on the side of like updates of how things are going. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a tough question, right? And it's it, how are you how are you addressing that is probably a top concern of people in the league. Um, but at the same time, right? Again, if you if you look at it the way that you know EPL does, they also they do the way that you were just talking about, where if you finish tenth, you make you get more prize money than if you finish eleventh. There's not enough prize money in MLS to motivate anybody to do anything. Yeah. I think when Red Bull, I think when Red Bull won the Shield in 2018, they earned a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in GAM or something like that. It's like, what? Why do I care? Especially if I'm an owner, right? If I'm an owner and I'm looking just to make money off of this, why do I care about one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars if I can develop somebody in my youth academy? like FC Dallas is doing right now, sell them for millions, reinvest it, you know, reinvest a quarter of it into my, my thing and make profit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's uh, the way the move, that's the way the league is moving. Right. I mean, yeah. in the final, in the, academy. in the final, can you guess the score? I'm going to hit it. Three, two, one. What's the score? Uh, two, one LA galaxy. It is three, one LA galaxy. Good try. Ah. Close. Um, my, there we go. Um, so that is it, people. The best 11 of all time. LA Galaxy knocking off Columbus Crew 3-1 to one in the tournament to wrap up their dominance, their pure dominance of um, MLS. We knew that was going to happen, but we had to do it just to be sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, like I said, it's, it's, there's not enough prize money to negotiate anybody. Again, it all comes back down to money. You need to put more money into the league, more prize money, make it worth people's while, or they're not going to care. And that's just, the, that's just the end of it. Um, but that's all I got. You got anything else you want to chat about at 12, 15 at night in the morning? Nope. I think it's time to go to bed. Me either. I'm dead. Uh, thank you guys for watching along. It kind of derailed itself a little bit, but that's kind of how our, prof our very professional podcast works here. Um, let us know your thoughts on kind of what the things we're talking about. Um, it was good. We were talking. Um, I'm going to and now I'm stuck with Fathead Connor on the wall because he decided to move. We're even the move. We're not done with this episode. I don't know what he's doing. Can you hear me? Um, yes, I can hear you. Um, unprofessional podcaster over here. My laptop died. <laughs> Your laptop died. Ridiculous. I've got like 2%, so I'm not doing much better. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching or listening wherever you're at. Um, make sure you let us know what you thought about some of the things we talked about, pro rel, uh, motivation, money, all that type of stuff. Cause again, we were looking to try and do a quarter season recap, kind of free thought type of episode, just kind of get our thoughts out of kind of things that have been going on over the last couple of, uh, weeks here in the league. And I'm kind of glad we were able to put that in there. Cause like I said, the, uh, voiceover of a simulated FIFA tournament probably wasn't a super stellar <laughs> idea for a video, but. Um, here we are anyway. So um, thanks for listening or watching wherever you're at. Make sure you subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You know, when we go live, uh, follow us on all forms of social media by searching the Designated Players Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Um, I think that's it. That's all. Yeah, that's all we use. Um, and stick around because we've got some really cool interviews coming up and we've got some other really cool ideas. Uh, most hated player at each club. Uh, and possibly a maybe a best 11 of um, homegrown transfers, you know, an FC Dallas or a, or a Red Bull would have a really good 
team. And then we would have to put them in a tournament, of course, to see who had the best one. Um, <laughs> um, but no, like I said, stick around. We got some more coming around. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we will see you on the next episode of the Designated Players Podcast. See you.